Hi, everyone. I'm Meredith Goldstein with the Boston Globe. I am an arts reporter there, and I also write about relationships, which is why I have the privilege of moderating director Matthew Heineman today. Matthew, thank you for joining me today. This is, it's just such a wonderful film, and I have so many things to ask you. So thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So I just want to start by saying, uh, you know, I do think I was asked to moderate this because I do write about relationships and I write about arts, but I also have two parents, uh, one who passed away, both who went to Juilliard and had really complicated experiences there as musicians and uh, watching this uh, musician's journey after that, that school experience was fascinating. One of the reasons I went into journalism was because I was not a good musician and I wanted to capture, I think when I was young, the process of music making. So I wanted to ask you, it's a very difficult thing to show someone writing music. And I was fascinated to see how you did it. It seems to me that it's so hard to tell the story of someone inventing through sound in front of you. I always laugh when I see uh, films where about, you know, sometimes they're like biopics of like a band that like, you know, it's like Elton John writing a song in a second. <laughs> on screen and yet you find this beautiful middle of showing um and letting us see how it happens yeah i mean i think that uh, i think part of me wishes like a lot of people i was a, a musician or a rock star uh, certainly as a kid that was that was a dream uh, obviously never fulfilled dream um I, i've always been drawn to music i love music i love listening to music um and i think you know, I love watching music films and music documentaries. And I think the opportunity to make this film with John, which was originally conceived to be really a process film, a process film documenting the, the making of American Symphony. Um, but almost immediately after that initial conversation that I have with John, which was at a dinner um, after he composed the score for a previous film I made called The First Wave, you know, right afterwards he got nominated for 11 Grammys so that he got re-diagnosed with cancer and so the whole purview of the film shifted almost before we even started shooting a couple of weeks later um nonetheless I think one of the goals was to try to capture that artistic process still and and not talk about it but experience it and feel it and you know John is an unbelievable musician obviously um I would say once in a generation musician and and to see him to see the way his body and his mind work while he's working um is a really special thing to see him channeling if you're religious god if you're not something above us you know he's he's certain whether you believe in religion or not he's certainly channeling something when he's playing and so and when he's writing and so that was really one of many goals that I had with the film was to try to capture that process in real time and, and see it and see that those moments of discovery and questioning. And, you know, I think the scene that probably most um, elucidates that is, is the scene before the wedding when he's, you know, sort of coming up with one of the main themes of the symphony. And, uh, you know, he's like, what is that? What is that feeling? And he's, he's trying to find it. And so that, you know, that was a very difficult thing to try to, yeah, make you feel like you're inside of his head, which is one of my goals. You've really, uh, in, in making documentaries, you've become very close uh, and given us a, a really close look at people's experiences. But I would imagine that the boundaries and what you want to be there for and when you want to fall back, that it's constantly changing and evolving. What were the conversations that went into um, where you should be, uh, you know, as a couple, were these two people saying wherever you want to be all the time were there boundaries i mean i think i for whether i'm making a film about the drug wars in mexico or isis in syria or the end of the war in afghanistan or the opiate epidemic or whatever it is you know my goal is always to try to take these big amorphous subjects and try to humanize them try to make them personal and intimate and, and that intimacy is something that to me is really important um to to make you feel like you're on a real time journey with people that you fall in love with that you care about that you empathize with and you know this was a different experience though for me because it was way more focused on just you know, really two people um and 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 the ups and downs that they experienced during this very pivotal moment in their lives 
And so I think, you know, and I, I knew John, I didn't know it's really Suleika before this experience. Um, I knew John a bit, but not that well. And so it was really important. And John obviously had been around cameras so much through his career and through his life. Um, but this was a different experience. I mean, we were filming every single day, 12, 16, 18 hours a day um, for seven months. And so the key for me is just developing that rapport and that trust to allow them to be themselves, to allow them to be vulnerable and um, funny and, and, and to, mal I mean, to literally and figuratively be in bed with them as they're, you know, um, talking and laughing and, and being human beings. Um, and so I think there's certainly a lot of discussion in the first couple of weeks of, of me pushing and pushing and pushing to try to get that intimacy. And I think after a certain point, the friction became less and less. And I think they sort of, I wouldn't say gave in to the process, but I think embraced the process, embraced the idea that if we're going to do this, if we're going to make this film, let's make it as raw and real and truthful and intimate as we possibly can. And so I think at a certain level, that relationship shifted where we all sort of were like, let's push and, and let this happen in the way that it should, um, not knowing where the story would go, not knowing what would happen to them. Um, and obviously, certainly with Sue uh, you know, battle with cancer, we didn't know where that, that was going to go. Um, but I, I owe so much to them for opening their lives to me and to us at this incredibly pivotal time. It occurs to me that the film is a really beautiful thing to watch for caregivers as well, because I, I a theme that really hit me, and maybe this is based on my own experiences, is, is just um, how if only life could be compartmentalized, where you could focus on one thing at a time. And I think there's, it, it, it's so difficult when wonderful things happen while somebody else doesn't get to be there and uh, while someone else is going through something so difficult and how two people can remain connected despite these like, vastly different life experiences and you were really seeing this play out in the moment so I wonder about you know moments like performing at a Grammy Awards while someone is in the hospital how you chose to uh, decide who should be where to film what you I mean it, it is um, a really honest look at how can I be celebrating while I'm also worried and how much we don't get the chance to separate those things sometimes so to what extent um, could you make decisions and how did you make decisions about their paths and how to capture them. Especially at drastically different moments where you knew one person would be, you know, getting treatment while another is like being watched by the world. Yeah. I mean, I I don't not that you're saying I'm, I was doing this, but I think I, I never really go into a film with like a a goal in mind for where this person's story arcs gonna go or what's gonna happen or or sort of like I, I try to remain as open minded as possible to let life dictate where where the film's going to go and where the storylines are going to go i think it was very clear in my discussions with sulika early on that she didn't she was very reticent at first because she didn't want to be the sick counterpoint to john's success um and i, I said and she, and she said that respectfully she's like i know you wouldn't intend to do that but i, I just don't want to unintentionally be that um and so you know it was incumbent upon me and also something that I really, I didn't want to do that. You know, I wanted to make her a fully fleshed out person and artist and character herself. And so that was, that was as important to me as it was to her. Um, and so, yeah, but I think, I think it became clear, you know, after they got married and then she went in for treatment and then obviously we didn't know that John was going to win five Grammys and win the album of the year, the biggest prize in music. Um, that this was sort of becoming a film both about American Symphony, but the symphony of life and, and the hurdles that we all um, are faced with at some point in our lives, depending on who you are, often in your life, you know, the world is a hard place. And especially now, I mean, it's heartbreaking what's happening in our world. And so I think if anything, this is a roadmap for the film. The film is somewhat a roadmap for dealing with these hardships and how to deal with these hardships um, while maintaining your own, you know, humanity and, and love. Um, and, you know, I think their, one of their main sort of organizing principles of life that, that art 
is a survival mechanism, that art is their way of persevering um, during these difficult moments. So it's a really beautiful thing for me to both learn about, but also experience and witness and embrace myself. I I was um I was very surprised in wh where you show criticism after you know John wins all these awards and and I probably just wasn't I'm deeply sometimes not online probably in a very good way and I was um it's a very lonely scene to uh experience all these accolades and then you know have have these critiques i wondered if you as someone who had worked with this person and knew him and if you were surprised when you were suddenly paying attention to the way in which success can immediately be turned in another direction one day after winning all this great stuff that that um it was a a scene i hadn't expected yeah it's funny i mean yeah i, I didn't think I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Obviously, I think it was a surprise to everyone. You know, um, if you walk down the street, I'm pretty sure everyone knows who Taylor Swift is. I'm not sure everyone knows who John Batiste is. Um, and so I think, you know, that certainly was a su surprise for him to sweep the Grammys in the way he did, even though he was the most nominated artist that year. Um, but yeah, I think I think John's been misunderstood for, for so much of his career and mischaracterized. And obviously that's one of the themes in the film is, is people not understanding who he is as a person, as an artist, uh, his approach to music. And, and so I think that's one of the things that I wanted to sort of pull the veil back on and show um, that even someone that successful is still misunderstood. Um, and, you know, that, that, that scene in the airport, the, with the shoe shine um, gentleman, you know, that scene, almost didn't happen we had a sort of logistical snafu on the on our production I, I i was supposed to be on that flight I got, the flight got canceled i didn't have a seat and so i did everything i can knowing that like something might happen at the airport i just i just, I, just, I said this inkling that like john walking through the airport would would provide some sort of interesting fodder the day after this huge high um and i you know that scene you, if you wrote that in a scripted film it, it would be preposterous but it's it's a beautiful documentary scene that that sort of encompasses so many different aspects of of that moment for john for those who have no idea how this works when do your subjects get to take a look at what you have does it depend on the project and what's the arrangement you make with people about when they get to see what you're doing I find that question, I'm not saying this combatively, I find that I've, I've received that question a lot with this film. And I find it interesting that by making a film about famous people, people ask that question more than about general. Uh, really? Because for me, I think that if anybody, I, I don't know what kind of documentary subject I'd make, but I would think maybe because I am a journalist, I'd be like, let me look, let me look, let me look. And I think um, also, I think because I'm very interested in relationships, I'm probably like well what are what is this other person's experience you never really get to know what your loved ones are doing when they're not right in front of your face so I'm probably approaching a little bit differently but um you know I have people when I do stories who want to can I see it 50 times before it runs and I'm like you can't even see it one time right. so I don't know if it's if the rules are the same I mean uh, I think this was a different type of film for me you know this was this is was I've made I don't know if hard journalism is what I've made in the past, but far more journalistic films. This this film was a experiential film about two artists, and in some ways, it's a love story. I it was way more participatory than other films that I've made in the past. You know, we we talked about the process, we talked about what was happening. You know, they became friends of mine. I'm, that's not something I'm hiding um, in in the making of this film. Um, I still had my own you know, editorial control and, you know, but I, I didn't want to just like have them show up at Telluride, the film festival where the film premiered and see the film for the first time. So I, I showed them the film, you know, before it was finished. I, I wanted to know what their opinion was. Um, and, you know, I, I appreciated uh, that back and forth. I didn't like make changes because of um, their feedback, but it was important to me that, you know, that they, that they saw it and I respected that, you know, our relationship um, beforehand. 
and and yeah. I think I think it was very 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 emotional for both of them to watch the film, but especially Suleika. I mean, she didn't remember a lot of the moments in the movie because she was so drugged up, um, especially the moments in the hospital. Again, not knowing that she'd even survive to see the movie finished. I also just out of respect wanted her to see it um, beforehand. Uh, so yeah, it was extremely, extremely emotional for her to watch. You mentioned this project being a little bit different, but to me, everything you do seems to be put you in an incredibly new world. Not all filmmakers are like that. Um, I'm sure you take many lessons from all of these experiences, but uh, beyond the sources in this and, and the music of this, uh, as a filmmaker, what kinds of, of very unique lessons any any one of them might you have taken from this experience? Because I imagine every project, it's like you're starting over all over again. Yeah. I mean, it's such a privilege to do what we do, right? Like every, every couple of years to be able to dive into a world and explore and to swim around and to learn and to grow. Um, it's something that I, I still pinch myself that I'm able to do what I do. Um, so it, it's something I both take very seriously. I feel a huge amount of responsibility and it's obviously something I'm deeply passionate about. Um, I think I say this with every film and it just continues to be true. My, my dad keeps asking me to retire this quote, but I it just, I can't because it keeps being true. When I was 21 years old, I heard Al Maisel speak and he said, if you end up with the story you started with, then you're more listening along the way. It's beautiful advice for life. It's beautiful advice for filmmaking. You know, don't be dogmatic, be open to the story changing. And that's something that I've held really, really near and dear to my heart in a career sense, in terms of what films I choose to make. And then within each film, within each shoot, within each shoot day, within each hour, you know, look beyond the frame. Um, and I, I like religiously believe in that at this point in my life. I just turned 40 and it was fun making a film with two people who embody that ideology in every frame of their life. You know, I think we, the three of us really believe that like magic exists behind every door. You just need to open it. And it was fun dancing with them during this process. And um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but that that's- it, in that it, way. it does. Um... When I think at the Globe, a lot of us do a story and we live with it for a week, sometimes a day, sometimes a month, and then you move on. And for you and for people who write books and are sitting in projects for much longer, it can be difficult probably to be curious about the world because there are a lot of projects I'm sure you want to do. How, how as a filmmaker, do you make the choice to say, here's what I'm going to truly immerse myself in and live in? Because I imagine you're psyched about a lot of stories and, and interested in many parts of the world. So what do you have a system for figuring out what you want to do next? Yeah, it's funny. I was, I was sitting with a filmmaker who's older than I am, who's, who's extremely successful yesterday. And I was shocked at how many films he had said that he started and stopped. Um, because I feel like, maybe that's happened once or twice in my career, but I, I think once I know that I want to do something, I, I do it and um, I commit to it. And it, there's a thousand hurdles and there's a thousand moments where I say, what am I doing? This is crazy. Let's stop. Or this, you know, um, certainly when you're in a war zone or you're being shot at, or, you know, you're the, and the stakes are different. You're questioning a lot of things in life. Um, but I think, yeah, I think these films just kind of have found me. It sounds sort of woo, woo or cheesy or whatever, but like, um, I don't feel like I choose these films. I feel like they choose me and, um, yeah. Well, I felt like I was chosen to watch it. So maybe we're all woo woo a little bit watching it. I just, it's, it's, uh, you've created such a beautiful portrait of 
music, creativity, a marriage, um, visual art. I just, uh, there were so many, I was riveted and it was beautiful. So thank you so much for being a regular now at Globe Docs uh, and uh, for bringing your work to the community and congratulations on all of the wonderful things people are saying about it and, and the audiences that are flocking to it. So thank you for joining. Thank you so much for having me and yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks for being here.